DJI have sent us their new Osmo Action 4. So we thought we'd go through six of the best ways to shoot with an action camera on your bike. Chest mount. It's a mount on your chest. This is the preferred way to use an action camera for mountain bikers in particular. Looks really cool when you have a flat bar. Still looks good if you have drop bars. We'll put in some footage here so you can see. It's really stable because it's attached right to your body. There are some things you've got to bear in mind though. Not all chest straps are created equal. DJI sent us this one and it is premium. There are other brands available, but if you get the cheap one from Amazon, it doesn't fasten up that tightly. It's not very comfortable to wear and you'll just regret it. Spend a tiny bit more money, get a decent brand, and you're gonna feel much more comfortable three hours into your ride. Second thing you need to consider, the angle of the camera. Now, you don't wanna set it up completely flat like that because then you get onto your bike and it's pointing down at the ground. You have to angle it up significantly, much more than you think you would need to, to get a decent shot. The position is gonna be different depending on what bike you're riding. So gravel bike, I put it a bit of an angle. If I'm on my race bike with a really hunched over position, you have to angle it down more. If you're on a mountain bike with a more upright position, up a little bit more. Experiment, do a test shot at the beginning of your ride to just make sure everything's set up properly and you won't have any problems. The selfie stick. A medium length, good quality selfie stick will give you loads of options when you're out riding. You don't have to extend it the full way. You can use it just as a handle. Like this, it will fit in a jersey pocket or your shorts pocket. Again, you get what you pay for, so don't go for a really cheap one because you've got your nice shiny camera on top of it. You don't want to have an accident for it to fall apart. Granted, you need to be careful of your surroundings, particularly if you're using, well, is this a bonus tip? A three meter long carbon selfie stick, like this one. If, you, uh, if you're in a controlled environment, using something like this, you can get some really cool shots, like a fake drone. So you extend it the full way, careful of power lines. And then you can stick it in the sky like this. Make sure you get the angle of the camera right. Again, take a couple of test shots. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the results. Carrying this is a little bit more tricky, but if you have a frame bag, it will fit in pretty snug. Should we try your stupid idea, Jimmy? If you want to be really stupid, you could attach the carbon selfie stick to the normal selfie stick and make it extra, extra long, possibly the longest selfie stick ever created. Oh! <laughs> All right, bad idea. The helmet mount, often used in American crit race videos. You can get a little sticky pad, 3M tape, so, so sticky, it's not gonna fly off anywhere. Once it's stuck on your helmet, pretty much permanent. It has the action camera, a little fitting on, and you can fit your action camera to the top of your head. Angle is important. Make sure you get it the way you want before you start filming your whole ride. Big thing to consider here, and the main downside in this situation is that it's heavy. An action camera is surprisingly heavy when it's mounted to the top of your head, and after about an hour or so, I always end up with neck pain. It doesn't feel that bad at the start, but trust me, if it's your only way of filming a ride, you don't want to commit to it for like three hours. One massive plus side to using it on your helmet is that your head is nature's gimbal. So it's super, super stable, even more so than the chest mount. Your head stays really steady when you're riding a bike. So combined with in-camera stabilization of most of these action cameras, you're going to get a super buttery smooth shot once again. One of my favorites, perfect for solo bike rides as well. The Clampy McClamperson. If anyone actually knows what this is called, I will give you a pat on the back. You can clamp it to pretty much anywhere and get some really unique angles, especially if you're on your own. You can clamp it on your bars, you can clamp it on your stays if, if your bike is not made of carbon. Your seat post, your thumb. This is DJI's own mount and is actually phenomenal. I'm upset to say it. It's actually technology which is used in drums believe it or not. So it's a ball joint, which means that when it's loosened off, you can position it in absolutely any angle you possibly want. And then it locks up and you can do really weird stuff. Most of these mounts will come with different shims, meaning that it will clamp on lots of different sized tubes. If you like to take risks, but also like high rewards, if you don't do it too tight, then whilst you're riding, you can even make adjustments. High risk, high reward. If you're a fan of vertical video, you can just go like this. And now you're making something perfect for Instagram. Or TikTok, whatever that is. My favorite on this list, regular viewers of this channel will know what I'm about to say. Pro standard grill mount. I discovered this from another YouTuber. Dustin Klein was the first person to be using this. It's a mount which you put in your mouth. And I know that sounds weird, 
but it's the most versatile and best piece of equipment. Like, I, I, I wouldn't be able to film videos the way I do without this. You can heat mold these little bits. It's made out of the same stuff as like a rugby gum shield. So that you end up with little indents and then it's always in the same place in your mouth. It's really secure, it's squishy, it doesn't stop you from breathing and it creates the most stable footage as well as being tiny. You can use it as a handle. You can shove it in a pocket and grab it easily. If you suddenly need both of your hands back, you can just quickly put it in your mouth. It's just the best piece of equipment for the filming that I have. It doesn't have to be this, but creating a handle of some sorts, it might be a selfie stick, it might be that clamp thing when it's in your pocket, or it might be this. It makes you so much less likely to touch the lens of the camera when you go and grab it. So say you've got a camera stuffed in your pocket, I always have this bit sticking out. When it's like this, I'm riding along, I grab it and all I've touched is the handle. So you're not at risk of getting smudges all over your lens and then your shots getting ruined. If you're gonna be doing any shots where you need to talk to the camera, all you have to do is flip it around and it's just so easy with this mount. So, my fave. The understem mount. In my opinion, the most boring, however, the most reliable and easy to access place you can put it on a bike. Obviously, it goes under your stem. This one here is a Synchros mount, which matches the Scott handlebars we have on this bike. However, there are other brands available like Barfly. I can't think of any others off the top of my head, but there are lots of brands that make them. Often they'll be combined with like a Garmin mount on the top and an action camera mount underneath, which sometimes fits lights, as you can see here. Look at that light. I would use this setup if I was doing a race and I don't want stuff in my pockets or a really fast through and off kind of ride where I need to be focused on the effort. You can quickly reach underneath start it rolling and then just leave it on. It's fit and forget. However, a lot of the footage looks very samey. So unless you're riding with people and there's a lot of action going on, the other options on this list are probably more exciting. Those are my favorite ways to film when out on the bike, but here are some bonus tips. These fluffy things from Amazon. They're little pieces of fluff that you stick onto the camera with 3M tape. If you leave them overnight and apply some pressure, they shouldn't come off. I've been using them for years now, and as long as you stick them on really well at the start and don't ride straight away, they will stay on. They will improve the audio outside massively. It's just like putting a dead cat on a more expensive microphone. The other alternate option is a big foam cover thing like this that goes over the whole camera. I don't like this as much. Mine tore straight away when I was using it because I was stuffing it in a pocket and taking it out again. And they don't reduce the wind noise as much as the little fluffy things, in my experience. Try out the little sticky ones from Amazon if you're having issues with wind noise. Now, not everybody's going to agree with me here, but unless you are an experienced filmmaker, I would leave everything on auto. Personally, I put this camera on 4K, 24 frames a second, so the file sizes are small. You might want to go to 60 frames a second if you want to slow your footage down, make it slow motion afterwards. But if not, 24 frames a second, look cinematic, and it's not going to take up loads of space on your memory card. And then use the standard color profile, so the same sort of colors that our eyes see, instead of the log profile, 10-bit, which is available in this camera and a lot of other action cameras, but you have to color grade it afterwards. Personally, I like to work on files that are ready to go. I'm producing YouTube videos in a controlled environment, not Hollywood films. In terms of camera exposure, so how bright the image is, I leave it on completely automatic as well. The speed you can access the camera, get it on and rolling is more important than the perfect shot. Yes, if the light wasn't gonna change and you were gonna ride down a mountain bike trail which lasted two minutes, I can see why you'd wanna set the settings up before. But for everyday riding, when the light might be changing all the time and it's over the course of three or four hours, you're not gonna be going into the settings and changing it. So just leave it on auto. Tell a story with your video. People make the mistake whenever they get an action camera of just getting random clips of them riding their bike. It's boring, no one wants to see it. I know you think it's cool, it's not. Think about what you were doing. Think about what's the start of this story? What do you, where do you want to take that message and then how do you want to conclude it? Think about adding more, th think about what someone might want to see and then make that video. Have an awareness beforehand about what you're shooting, execute it, edit it, put it up there and hopefully people will like it. Or worst case, you've just got something that presumably at least you like. Tell a story. Quick record setting. This is a setting 
in loads of action cameras. It's on by default in the DJI Osmo Action 4, which lets you turn on and start recording with the press of one button. So when you're riding along with this underneath your handlebars, for example, you click it once, it starts recording, you click it again, it turns off. That is really important when you're on a bike ride, when something interesting is happening, you can quickly access the camera with one button and you won't miss the moment. There's six ways you can shoot with an action camera on your bike, plus some bonus tips. Let us know your tips for shooting with an action camera in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.